G'day everyone, welcome back to Rob Shed and today we're working on our gutter for the HGU and it would be an easy thing to put this piece back on that came from the car. It's not actually badly rusted, there's a few little pits where it's had a bit of moisture behind the chrome moulding and started a bit of rust in there but a spot of weld on there, grind it off, it'll be as good as new and we've got enough material here that we can come up from underneath and weld it along the cut edge and put it back on the roof where we've prepared it and that would work just fine. But I've got a method of making gutter and I'll show you that today. And it's not going to be a lot of help to a lot of people out there because you won't have the equipment I've got. But I'll show you a few other things along the way. The second choice would be to find a good piece of second hand gutter from another car. And once again, these cars are at an age where yes, they're hard to find, but there's still derelict vehicles out there that are beyond restoration that do have reasonable gutters on it and angle grinder, take them off, prepare them, you can put them onto another car. The other one that's out there is the Holden panel vans. This era, up until into the early 1980s, the piece of gutter that goes above the door is screwed on. If you can find a piece of that, and it does turn up on eBay from time to time, you can trim a piece of that, put it on your car, that will work. The other one is our Aussie Fords from 1971 through up to 1978. They have got this piece of gutter and it's held on with pop rivets and three spot welds. It comes off very easy. It is the same profile as Holden. It's the same profile as earlier Falcons. And they do have a rust issue. They rust on the inside edge, but they've got a big wide web of metal on there. And you can even take one that is rusted to the point where it needs repairing on the car it's come off, but the outside edge is good enough to salvage for another car. So there's another choice. Now back before I had a P9 Pull Max and bead roller and things like that, I've made gutter by simply getting a strip of 1.6 material cut by a sheet metal worker to the width of the gutter. And that means that the chrome moulding will clip back onto it. It's got enough thickness in the material to simulate the crimped over edge on the top, the little safe edge, and the little bead on the bottom that the gutter clips onto. And it can be bent. You can attach it to the car if you've got a bit of length on it you can just creep it and you'll even get it to bend around these corners once you've got the shape right you can take another piece of the same material and put it in behind it and give yourself the little divot on the bottom enough height on the top so it all lines up with the factory and what you're going to do is take your mig welder and put a few little spots of weld and i'd say probably 16 to 18 millimetres apart, so 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch apart. And then once that's cooled down, you can grind those out and get a nice little corner in there. And once it's on the car, same thing, weld it up from the bottom, grind it all up, get it pretty. Put a bead of urethane through there, the job's done, it looks like a factory gutter and it's all going to work beautifully. This is a set of gutter tools that I made for my P9 Pull Max many years ago. And the weird thing is, given that we're working on a Holden at the moment, was I made these for doing an Australian Falcon. And it was a GT replica. And the piece of gutter behind the back door had rusted away where it runs down the C pillar. And I needed to recreate it. So I made this profile up. So basically how it works, this is the bottom post that sits into the base of the pull max, and this is the one that goes in the chuck that moves up and down. So when we pre-fold our piece of metal and put our safe edge on it and sit it in the bottom, it doesn't have any of this dimple on the back. But as this tool works up and down and we increase the pressure on it, it folds this piece down and it puts the little dimple in the back of it. Now the other one that I've got made, included the piece of roof edge as well and it's just the same thing but a little bit more complicated it's got a few more corners into it so that once i fed the metal through there it would put this little recess in here and start the little curve for the roof panel so that was all doable too now if you're handy you can make your own basic set of gutter tools just out of a piece of 12 mil half inch wide metal and all it really is is just two pieces of metal that we're going to grip together that have the groove in there for the gutter to fit into. So you can experiment with sizing, but if you don't have anything like a pull max, you can use something like this. And if you cut off the piece that we don't need anymore, straight through there, and we just make a little piece to go on one half of it, and a piece to fit on the other half of it, 
when it squeezes together they will bottom out and they will make that profile and then it's just a matter of working your way along and you can make as much gutter as you like. If you have a bead roller there is no reason why you can't machine in a groove in one roller for part of the gutter and a groove in the other roller for part of the gutter and that will work with any pair of rollers that have a flat surface on them and it won't affect the original function of those rollers. So if you've got a lathe at home and you can do it yourself, if not, a machine shop would be able to do it for you. And then you've got everything you need to make your own gutters. So we might just knock up a piece of gutter now for this roof and I'll show you how to do that. And then um, we'll look at some other things. I've got our piece of metal I'm gonna make it from and the first job is to put that little safe edge on the top and there's not much of a roll on the original gutter, but with reproducing it, I have to give it a little bit more meat because of the limitations of the machine. And if we're trying to come back to a few millimetres of metal here to fold, we're going to wind up with this apron wanting to push it back underneath the clamp and that'll cause other issues. So I've worked in roughly an eighth of an inch, so three millimetres there, and that's enough material that I can get it to lift up and fold it and I need a fair bit of pressure on it so it won't want to slide under it as well. So we'll fold that and then we'll crimp it down with the hammer and then we'll come back and put our second fold to right angles in there and then we can run it through the pull max. Okay, so that's brought that up nice now, so I can just hammer that over and turn it into a safe edge. Now that's actually the trickiest part of the whole mission is getting a nice even run along there and quite often by building a mic hand like this you'll get a few little waves in there but usually where I've done long runs of it and we've put on a car that doesn't have a moulding over it just run the grinder along the top and just take it easy and you'll just flatten that off a bit and get a nice continuous line but this one's come up nice we'll go and put it back in the pan brake and we'll put our second fold in it and then we're ready to poke it through the pull max and turn it into a proper gutter. Okay, so that's got our fold in there. Now if you've got an EH or an EJ Holden, this is how their gutters are. So that's all you need to make. And this profile here, if you make a long enough run of it, you can actually bend it and get it to follow around. Now a while back I did a set of EH gutters and they come down the roof, they roll down the windscreen, they've got a curl at the bottom. And I started at the bottom, welded it to the car, and just with the heat of the weld, I was able to bend the piece of metal around that forms the gutter to wrap it around a 90 degree bend and the same thing worked my way up the pillar little section at a time got to the top and just once again the heat of the weld in the piece of metal made it soft enough that it flowed around and matched the roof and that is an easy profile to make you can get a sheet metal fabrication shop to make you this much material and then from the rest of it you could trim it to the right width across here and you could shape it to your car and weld it on and you'd have the job done. This profile's also above the back door on the Holden panel vans. And so that's another same thing again. You could get the straight piece made for a sheet metal worker, start welding it on and use the heat of the weld to soften the metal and you can shape it around the edge of the roof and keep spotting it on as you go and get all the way down to the other side and you do it in one piece. But we need our little divot on the bottom so we'll run it through the pull max and we'll turn it into a piece of conventional gutter for want of a better word and then we'll be able to put it on our car. Just 
bringing up the speed, I've had a couple of setbacks here. Now normally, this is one of my favourite Pullmax tools that absolutely works a treat and it has literally made miles and miles and miles of gutter. But today it's camera shy and decided it didn't want to work and it's done the job but it's made a pretty rough profile. It's too fat down the bottom and the sides have got too much of a curl in it. I'm just not happy with it. So I've spent a bit of time on it and I've welded a little packer in there to close it up and that's probably half the problem is it's just worn out from doing the lengths I've done with it and usually I'm running a long length through it. So you can steer it a bit and things like that and you cut the ends off it anyway and the centre sections actually come up quite reasonable. But today we're just trying to do a little short bit and we're relying on the ends being good as well and so the wear and the tool sort of bitten us a bit. So I've just tidied it up, got it working a whole lot better so now I'm just actually hopefully going to make a proper profile now. So we'll give it a hit and poke it through and see what happens. Got it quite a bit tighter down the bottom now, so it's actually catching on where I've hammered this over. And there'll be a few little lumps in there that I haven't quite squashed down as much. So, But once it's been through a couple of times, it should sort itself out. It's starting to get a little bit of that dimple on the back of it now. It's just starting to come into there. So a few passes, and like everything else, just slowly, slowly, a little bit at a time. We'll just keep lifting the bottom tool up a little bit, and it'll be seating this further and further down each time we pass it through. working a whole lot better now. It's done a really nice job from the end that I fed in first up to about the middle and then for some reason it's woven out like that and I don't quite know why and like I say this thing normally works an absolute treat so once again it could just be the short piece and it's twisting a bit in there but I'll just check it against the car and if we only need that much it's going to work and do what we want. It's got good definition with the little dimple on the back of it so the gutter moulding will clip onto that nicely and we'll be cutting all this away and putting a weld in close to it anyway so we don't need any of that. So I'm just hoping we've got enough good material that we can salvage a gutter from that. I would say we will get away with that if we cut that off just there we'll have enough good material and we can trim it back and we can weld it to the car. It's got a little bit of a curl in it that'll bend out and a little bit of effort getting it right now and it's less work later on when we're actually trying to put it on the car. Go a little bit the other way I'd say. Grab a straight edge. Okay, that looks good enough for what we want. So I'll cut him off there, trim the waist off, and then it's just a matter of trimming it to fit it on the car. Nearly there.
trying to get the top edge to be roughly straight. We've got that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just butt this up here, get it in a straight line. And if I can get a little scribe line along the top of it, I can trim it to shape. And then hopefully it'll just go straight on. Okay. This edge here is just a little bit low, so what it's doing is it's making the gutter a little bit high on the car. So I'm just going to tap it up a little bit. That lines up pretty nicely with the original gutter line there. Just need to make sure it's in a straight line along the car. And looks like I can grind a little bit out of the back of it. Get it to tuck in a little bit nicer. Looks pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll grab the welder and bring it over here and I'll just spot the gutter on and then we'll just start working from along the bottom and weld up from the bottom and get a series of tacks in place. And then once I've got that done I can just get a pass of weld onto it and we'll have that little job ready to grind up. So Now this is pretty important that we get this piece not only straight this way but lined up along the face of it. So any dog leg in here is going to make it more difficult to get the moulding to stay on instead of just having it clip back on as we go. It's going to work. Crash up. That's actually lining up really nicely all the way along there, those two pieces of metal, a nice smooth line all the way along the bottom. So I can get underneath there now and just get a series of tacks in place and then there's no reason why I can't just continue straight on and get my parcel weld in.
I like to get a nice big heavy weld up the face of the two parts of the gutter just so it'll melt all the way through and I like to tuck in from behind and just weld that little overlap so there's no little piece sitting up there that could have a bit of moisture creep into it. Naturally we will wipe some urethane along this back edge along there just to seal it all up again afterwards and mainly so we're just not having precautions and don't worry about a big lump of weld there we can grind it flat on the back we can grind it flat on this side and we can carefully grind in underneath here where we've got the join and get rid of that lump of weld and then we can have the molding just clip straight back on and if this was the base model car without a molding on there it would just simply be a matter of paint prepping it and painting it with the body so there's no problems there either so we'll let that cool down a little bit there's a series of tacks all the way along and they're pretty close together the widest one's probably about 5 eighths of an inch, so 15, 16 mil. And uh, I'll just be able to do a bit here, a bit there, a bit there, do a few passes and it'll all be done. But the heat issue now is whether we're heating this part of the roof up up here. So it's not so much the gutter that's the problem, it's more this corner in the roof that we don't want to get superheated. I've had a few questions over the time we've been making these videos about welding helmets and I like most people started out with early on auto darkening helmets and I had issues with them. The early ones were battery powered and I'm talking in the 1980s and my eyes were too fast for them so I would strike an arc and suddenly I'd have a flash of white light in front of me before it would go dark and so tried it for a while, didn't like it, went away from it and went back to the old flip front helmet. And then technology leapt on, I thought I'd have another go. And the first helmet I bought was quite expensive and I didn't enjoy it, so I bought a cheap and nasty one and it worked okay. And I went through a few of those, they'd last a few months, sort of sometimes a year and things like that, but just sort of problems that they had with them being cheap ones. So got grumpy with it all one day and bought a 3M helmet. and. The only real difference is they're not solar powered. A lot of them are solar powered for um, just this, the arc, keeps the batteries charged in it. These have got batteries in them that need replacing, but this is by far the best helmet I've ever had. Now, I bought this, it's not a commercial. This is just a thing that I use and I really enjoy using it. The current generation is far better than the ones before. The previous ones had like a green tint to them. These have got a gold tint and when you're on the light setting and setting things up everything's a lot clearer and easier to see so this is by far the best helmet i've had and this is the second 3m one i've had and once again there was a technology leap in there and yes i would thoroughly recommend this and sadly 3m don't pay me to say that and if you're from 3m and you happen to be watching this and you just want to pay me for saying that i'm, I'm happy to have the money and um, that would help out a lot but yeah guys, um, with helmets, I think it's more, the more you spend, the better helmet you're gonna get anyway. And if you pick a big brand name that's been around for years, like the people that make my welder, Kempi, they're a very well-known brand around the world. They make an auto darkening helmet. I've never tried one, so I can't give you a recommendation on it. But if it's anything like their welders, it would be awesome as well. Uh, certainly made a big difference to our lives from the old flip front helmets and things. And, get things lined up and yeah. that's probably why I weld with braille so much it's just from those days of setting things up and then you put your helmet on and weld what you had to weld
one more pass and I'll have that done. Just while we're waiting for that to cool down, this is my favourite weapon for grinding these sorts of areas. And it's just a worn out 125mm 5 inch grinding disc. And I put it on my air sander. And you, know, you can just grind along the, the top of the beater weld and knock that off. And you can get it down pretty smooth. And then just like a little belt sander, give it a tidy up at the end and finish it up. And that way you're not in any great danger of grinding the little lip off the edge. Because this is made to take a disc on it, it's got a little taper on the back of it. And so I don't overstress the center of the disc. And with something this big, it probably wouldn't matter. But I take the precaution of just putting a flat washer in there that's too big for the shaft. And that way it'll just sit on the outside shoulder and get rid of that taper. So when I put it on there, center it up on the nut, it all just tucks into the disc nicely like that and it's ready to grind. Making tools do more than one job. Somebody got it a little bit too hot. Okay, all welded on. So here's our windscreen. Now this is just a mock-up one, so it's an old toughened windscreen. And it's still got the complete rubber on the back of it. So I haven't put a piece of rope in it and actually pulled it into the car. but. With dropping it into the hole like that, I can see it fits nicely up against the roof. This panel's only tech screwed in at the moment, but it fits nicely across the bottom of there, right on the pillars, and the corners look good as well. So we know that's all going to work, and the roof's back where it should be. So it's one of those things. There's many things that you can use to mock up with. Glass with an old rubber still on it, and I could have even cut the lip off the back of the rubber, which tucks around the flange in the car, and that way it would have dropped completely in. But I can see from where I'm at that it's all going to work nicely. So, nearly a goer. So that's it guys, we have got our roof job done. All bar just filling these seams, which we'll do with lead later on, but I'm not in a real great panic to do it right now. We'll get all the rest of the structural work done in the car and then we'll move on to doing all the paint prep. So all the filling work, whether it be plastic or whether it be lead. Gutters come up really nice. It's straight along the car this way and it's straight along the car this way. So that'll all flow in nice with the whole lot. And I've ground it all up on the bottom of it and it really does look like the factory put it there. So we have taken the rusty roof off the car. We've made repairs to the car. We've made repairs to the roof. We've modified the roof and put the different windscreen in it. And we've made repairs to the gutters and it's all back together again. And it's all looking like a factory job. So for everyone that's followed the series all the way through on this roof restoration, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it guys. Loving the feedback and things like that. Loving the pictures of your own cars that people are sending through. That's all great. And that's what this needs to be is an interactive forum where we can all get together and talk about our projects. So coming up on this car, we will be working in this back wall area. We've got some repairs under the windscreen to do. And further down the track, we've got some rust in the firewall where the front subframe assembly bolts up to the car. So that needs a little bit of structural work in there. So we'll actually have everything out of it, the subframe off the car and do some major structural repairs to the firewall. But I'm thinking we'll probably do a couple of 34 Ford Coupe Ute videos coming up just to break it up a little bit, throw a few other things into the mix and then we'll be back into the old Kingswood Ute. I'm Rob Teal. Thanks guys. We'll catch you next time.